Hey, hello, everyone. How you doing here? Uh, my name is Rob Taramina. I'm one of the producers of uh, The Shutdown. It's a, a brand new documentary uh, that sheds light on sort of what we happened during the shutdown to small business owners. And it's taught and it's really told from the perspective of small business owners. We wanted to give them a voice, um, but it really comes full circle with a, a wonderful, inspiring message at the end. Um, but I want to thank everyone. Before we sort of get into the exclusive interview, I want to thank everyone for doing their part because this would not have grown had it not been for you. Um, really connecting and the, from the film resonating with you and then being willing to share it. And I, I am so appreciative of everyone that took the time to watch it and then share it. Um, you know, some some of the numbers we'll share it a little bit later on as they bring on uh, the other producer of the film. His name is uh, Jason Schuler. But it's tremendous w the amount of work that you guys have put into this to help this film go viral, and it's really connecting well with the community. So thank you so much. And we also want to remind everyone. Uh, to go out and support their local small businesses. And if you want to learn more how you guys can do that, please go to rebuildafter.com. Uh, uh, but today's segment, this live stream, we wanted to dedicate to talking about behind the scenes, bring the producers on board, allow you guys to ask some questions. So as we're sort of having our discussion, you're welcome to participate as well and submit any questions simply by commenting below. So if you're watching this on Facebook or in a group or on YouTube or even streaming this on your television, um, Figure out a way, maybe you can use your cell cellular device here and you can submit a question to us and we'll be happy to answer it. But we wanted to give our perspective of what it was like to film it and then also why we filmed it. And to help me talk about that, I'm going to bring him on right now and I'm going to welcome Jason. How you doing, bud? Howdy. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Um, so obviously, if I talked about you, I'm going to make you blush because I'm a big fan. Uh, I, I crush hard on Awakened Films. I think Romance. it's amazing. Yes, exactly. I, I'm, I'm a big fan, obviously, of you and all the work and your entire team. You, you know, we go way back. We've been working together for, oh, goodness, I think it's ne nearly a decade now when we first, uh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but instead of me sort of crushing hard, and I'll do that a little bit later on, trust me, but just give everyone some context of, you know, who you are, who is Awakened Films, you know, what, what are some of the projects that you guys have worked on? Well, hey, thanks for having me on the show. So excited to be here to chat with your audience and mostly chat with you, Rob, as I mentioned, hashtag bromance. So <laughs> we're going strong there. Uh, Awakened Films, you know, it's it was a dream 20, 25 years ago. I uh, wanted to go to university for film. Uh, NYU was on my short list and very excited about that as a high schooler. You know, things happen in life. Uh, we didn't have the resources as a family. Uh, had some changes in my life occur um, and ended up not pursuing it, not going to school, not pursuing it. And it wasn't until about 15 years ago that I actually said, this is an important dream I don't mm. want to let go of. Yeah. Um, and to decide just to try it. You know, it wasn't a go for broke scenario. I'm sort of a, a calculate kind of guy, figure it out, mm -hmm. invest a bit, try it, see some, see some success, invest a bit more, see some success. And over the last uh, decade, 15 uh, plus years, uh, it's grown into something really special. And really what we do is creative visual storytelling. We tell stories that um, connect with the heart. We work with national and local nonprofits. We work with national and local businesses. Um, a lot of what we do would be sort of in that marketing stream. Um, but, but what we try to do with, with everything is tell a great story and do it in a cinematic way. Mm -hmm. Not with, you know, the kind of typical news style, quick flashes, get in, get out, get it done. But think about metaphors. Think about how that story is going to impact our audience. And it's always unto a purpose, right? Everything we do as marketers is unto a purpose. So whether it's selling a product for a company that we care about, whether it's raising a million dollars for a nonprofit that we care about, um, what we do is package creative visual stories uh, in a way that our audiences, I think, really align with, really uh, connect with. Yeah, and uh, honestly, and and I don't just say this because we have a great relationship, but I I mean it. Um, you guys are honestly one of the best at what you guys do, and which is why you know when when I sort of had this idea that I wanted to put this project together, I literally only had one person, one company in mind. I didn't have a B plan, by the way. I didn't tell you that. I didn't have <laughs> a B it plan. Out. It was that. It was it. It was either awakened or nothing. And, uh, and so I'm so thankful that you sort of came on board and with this project to do this with me, because, you know, early on, the reason why 
uh, you know, and what led me to to the idea is, and, and I know you, you you and I have talked about this, um, you know, off camera a lot is, you know, I've been very heavily involved with helping small businesses around the country uh, with their small uh, with their business interruption claims. You know, there's this, this whole thing. Everyone's, you know, getting denied. And so I've been working very, very hard with some national law firms on that. And after speaking with, you know, well over a thousand businesses, I heard this message from them that I was not hearing, hearing from the public and from the media. And I was like, wow, this is a story that needs to be told. And that's when I came with you. And I was like, you know, what do you think? Do you think we can, we can pull this together in a short period of time and put together this documentary? And so the rest is history. But I'm sort of curious because I know how busy you are. I know you're working on some huge, huge projects. You're constantly traveling. Um, you know, what was sort of unique about the project? And you don't have to say because of me. I know we have a good relationship here. But <laughs> but what was it about the, the project that was unique that you sort of wanted you and your team to sort of come alongside and be a part of it? You know, I'm a small business owner myself, uh, Rob, as you are. I don't know what the exact cutoff is, whether it's 500 employees or 50 employees, but you know, running a business, being um, an entrepreneur, all of those things have uh, repercussions in one's life. And I love the idea of creating something new, creating something that's never been done before. Obviously in, in my world, that's video, that's film, that's storytelling, but it's also creating a business, creating a, a revenue stream, creating something that supports my family, I'm the father of two young kids. I have a beautiful, loving wife. We have a mortgage. You know, we've got the typical stuff of life. And, and so creating something that as a small business owner would, would sustain us as a family. We have employees. We have full-time employees. We're sustaining their families, sustaining their, their lives. You know, this is something that I truly align with. And when I heard from you that you were working on this project um, and there was a facet of the project that might have to do with telling a visual story. I, I mean, I'm in. Um, it, it aligns with me both on telling a powerful story, but it also really aligns with me on, on wanting to do something for those like myself that have been deeply impacted. We, we have struggled. It has not been easy since, uh, really since March, early March. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, thankfully, we are just fine. The Schulers are going to survive. We're pulling out of this. Awaken Films is surviving. We're pulling out of this. But it's not been easy. And I, I think that story that I have is a story that resonates with others. And so to use my aptitude and my crew and our experience to shine a light or point a lens at that story, man, I was all in. Yeah. Well, listen, I am so incredibly grateful. And uh, I, I knew it was going to be a shot in the dark because I, I knew that you were working on some some pretty serious projects. So listen, honestly, before if I haven't said it before, I want to say it again. Honestly, Jason, thank you so much. And Pleasure. and uh, and to, I hope I don't know if Brad is there, but to Brad and the rest of your team that were a part of the project, I, I honestly I appreciate all the amount of time and just honestly love that they put into this project. Um, you know, you can really tell with the end results. Um, I love it, and you know, obviously, it's really resonating well with the community. Everyone's really enjoying this film, so thank you. 100%. Our pleasure. And uh, the guys loved being a part of it as well. Um, um, most of us actually touched it in one phase or another. So yeah. very thankful. So I, I re obviously, I remember the day that we were filming and we we're, you know, driving all over the place. And, and something that's unique about this project is, you know, normally, I know you want to take a few days to film something like this, but just the, the sort of the nature of the timing. Um, everyone's schedule. Listen, we're going through some very serious time, this pandemic, and we've got limitations ourselves. Um, you know, so as we we're sort of like going around from location to location shooting, you know, is there sort of one moment that just stands out to you uh, that maybe you want to sort of share with everyone a little bit of a behind the scenes? Um, and as you're talking, I'll, sh I'll share some pictures. Maybe maybe some of these pictures will, will, uh, will inspire you here. This is from uh, from the day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was with uh, Kevin at the crepe place. Yeah, you know exactly. everyone's story was so unique. Um, I think I think back uh, probably the 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 one piece that jumped out originally when you asked that question is Tori Ann at Lush. You know she's a cancer survivor. That's actually a picture of her there on screen. Um, she was just all like laid her laid her heart bare before us. Um, you know so many folks. Uh, when you get on camera, you get a little bit sort of nerve. How do I look? How do I sound? And, and I'm sure she might've felt that as, as do I even sitting here right now, of course, but she just laid her heart bare as a mother, as a cancer survivor, as somebody who put her heart and soul in this business and desperately wants it to survive. And yet 
is finding this shutdown um, really difficult. Like she, she really said, I don't know if we're going to make it. And not only did it resonate with me as a fighter, she seems like a fighter through and through as a mom and as a, you know, as a cancer survivor, but also as someone who's a dreamer, I'm a dreamer too. And I have goals and desires and dreams and hopes. And, you know, I, I think that her story just really resonated with me. She's such an awesome person. I wish her business the best. Um, additionally, just going around seeing different businesses in Long Island uh, from Dr. Dr. Mark, uh, the dentist's office, he has multiple locations. The impact of the closure on his world versus my world, I never thought to myself, someone deemed dentistry non-essential. It blows my mind. Like that, you know, that somebody could just say, that's not okay. We don't want you to operate. I, I just doesn't. All politics aside, just blows my mind that a dentist would be deemed non-essential. And he he was doing his best to keep his staff. Um, you know, Kevin, he's an entrepreneur through and through. Uh, crepe, crepe guy, there he is there. You know, he said he had multiple locations and one of them had a buffet. That didn't make it in the video. But, uh, you know, his buffet version, I don't know how that's going to survive. Or if it does, it's going to be totally different because uh, it, it's, it's a new, brave new world we're in. Um you know, oh, that's uh, Nick over at uh, Husk and Vine. That guy's a fighter as well, and he has great personality. Um, I love the line he said about everything from his kitchen. The main ingredient of stuff from his kitchen is is the sun. You know, he's this sort of like organic type guy that's what you see is what you get. And you can tell he's had to rearrange his whole business. Um, and then obviously, uh, I think that's Nick. Oh, that's Donnie there. Sorry, Donnie at uh, uh, Relish. Relish. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Donnie has this beautiful business in operation and now he's got a secondary business. He's just got to start and barely had it open a week. And then boom, you're shut down. Like, wow, crazy, crazy world we live in. So I don't know, you know, every sort story was unique and relevant to me, but I think having, uh, Tori on top of mind, she really just was such a beautiful soul to yeah. say, I'm in it to win it, but you know what? We may not make it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that that hit home. I remember that interview and when when she said that, it sort of made it very real. You know, and this is a very real struggle for a, a lot of entrepreneurs around the country and you know, most businesses, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'll share this, I'll be honest, you know, I know that most businesses around the country, they're not liquid enough to be able to withstand a few weeks of shutdown, oh, yeah. let alone a few months. And I, I don't know that, you know, we'll really see the impact of this maybe for another few months after this or maybe a year or so. But I do know that the only way to recover is if as a community we come together. I mean, this this is not a solo thing. This is not one guy coming out and one woman coming out trying to rebuild on their own. This is this is going to be a community effort here. I got to say, Rob, you know, that was your injection from the beginning. Uh, you wanted to get that element of, well, what's next? You know, all I thought about was the story. It's sort of the, usually it's a before and after, but we're not mm -hmm. through it enough to see the yeah. after. So I really was just thinking, okay, what's the the meat of that story? Let's get, let's get the details of that story. And from yeah. the beginning, Rob, you said, we got to, we got to inject in, let's inject something about community, about support, about love. And, and, and there were a number of questions you interjected during the filming process mm -hmm. that got us that ending section where the film ends, a good 20% of it is about, well, what's next? The next part is come out and support us. Let's yeah. support each other. Let's shop local. Let's eat local. Let's serve one another. And that really wrapped it up, not only in a tidy, neat bow, but it was mm -hmm. such a feel-good story at the end. Yeah. I think if we had just stayed in that negative side, yep. um, it probably wouldn't have resonated as much with folks because you get that sort of negativity on you and you sometimes just want to wash it off. And I think that was such a beautiful thing to bring up, Rob. Thank you for that. I agree. Thank you. And and I think you're right. You know, That's the part I think that why it's if people are sharing it so much. You know, I think like, you know, last I checked, you know, one of the, the places that we have the, the film, you know, it's, it's you know, about 35,000 people have viewed it so far Amazing. in this one platform, which is incredible. And I think it's because we allowed the story to come full circle. You know, we didn't want to leave on on a negative note. We wanted to inspire people to, you know, to that next next uh, sort of, you know, step, which is why we even created the, the website Rebuild After. You know, I'll, I'll actually... Bring it, I don't know. Can I bring it up here? There you go. All right. Very good. Sh tell us about the website. Yeah. So this is sort of why we created this. We wanted a place not just where people can watch the film, 
but we wanted people to be able to take ownership of the next steps and you know where people can come in they can they can you know join this right here by by pledging that yes i'm going to support a local business that's really important and uh, what's great about this is once they do um, you know, click and submit their email to to pledge their support. They join a community of people where the conversation then continues, and people get to share their experiences at local small businesses. And I I think that for me is a big part. It's just one thing for like for example you and I to encourage people to say this, but now once their strength in numbers, once you see hundreds of people participating in this movement, going out to businesses, you know, taking that wonderful sel selfie. Whether I was going to say that's been oh my, my favorite part. I've, I've been seeing these selfies pop up but yeah whether it's a business owner but most of the time it's not it's somebody who's right. a patron hey exactly. i'm out front of so-and-so just got my hair done hey i'm just picked up a takeout meal yeah love that that's the little little bit of encouragement i think that people needed and uh, so we're seeing that that spark pick up a little bit more which is really nice and i think this is a really great opportunity for us to bring in a special guest all right let's bring her in let, let's bring her in i want to bring in christine right now let's see here christine are you there I'm here. Hi, guys. Christine, welcome. Hi. Now I know everyone knows you, so but but yeah. maybe for like the one person in the area that doesn't know who you are, why don't you just let everyone know, uh, you know, who you are, what organization you represent? Okay, thank you. Um, so I am one of the founders of the Smithtown Children's Foundation. We've been helping our local community, families in crisis, since 2008. Uh, that's everything from helping people pay bills, fund scholarships. We've been a resource for the social workers, helping them with their neediest families, providing Thanksgiving meals, adopting families, uh, school supplies. Um, so we, as I said, since 2008, of course, this has been a challenge since COVID. Um, just like everyone else, we're a small business. Uh, we're all volunteers. We've managed to do that for 12 years, which has been great. Um, but we've had to cancel three of our four major fundraisers. No golf outing, no casino night, no our 10th annual Mike's Hike would have been the end of May. Uh, now we're playing by year to see whether we're going to get in uh, mm -hmm. our community table tasting event in October, which I don't know. We're, we're still up in the air. Yeah, I think that's a part of of the shutdown that maybe a lot of people don't understand how it really impacted not for profits that rely on yeah. events to help sort of keep that engine rolling. I know Jason, you're really really involved with not for profits. You know, have you also seen the impacts uh, with the not for profits that you work with around the country? Hundred percent. It's yeah. it's been quite sad. Uh, you know, even our our local nonprofits. We had one local nonprofit that just got their gala in first of of March. <laughs> And they did well, record numbers. We, mm. we were fortunate to be a part of that with some video production. Um, but most local galas have been canceled. Mm. And it, it trickles down even beyond that, Rob. So yes, for the nonprofit, Christine, for folks like yourself who are doing great work and now your resources are limited because you're running on budget numbers that weren't even comparable to last year. Yeah. But then there's even the, the vendors and support teams, like whether it's a caterer, yeah. whether it's the event space, whether it's the photographer or videographer, or it's some other, you know, graphic designer that was helping you with some print work. You know, there's, there's all these people who have, who are mothers and fathers who are um, sons or daughters who are husbands or wives, and they're just trying to make ends meet. And uh, I love what you're doing, Christine, with the nonprofit. Bravo. Thank you for, uh, supporting such a wonderful community and and i think you're gonna make it we're all gonna make it through this but it's not easy times right now is it no and and it's funny you talked about the gala our casino night was march 13th or 14th we were calling it the luck of the irish casino night we were going to try our hand at a casino night because we always did a dinner dance and de blasio shut down the city the day before and we're like oh. right, we can't do this oh my god so hard but, you know you make but this is where you make lemonades out of lemonade out of lemons. I had 65 auction baskets, raffle baskets. And my silent auction guy goes, Hey, uh, you know, I'm doing an online thing. And I'm like, oh, I can't ask people for money right now. Well, I got over that real quick. And about three weeks into COVID, I said, let's do this. And I took pictures and made descriptions of the, all the auction baskets. Mm. And we put that up till through like mother's day. And we made about seven thousand dollars. So the people who could still contribute did. You know, the people who know us understand what our mission is, and that for us to be a resource, you know, the funds have to be at the ready. You know, at yeah. the end of the day. 
Yeah. If, if I could just interject really quick, Rob, I just want to say lemons at a lemonade. I, I agree with you. And, and what we've seen, and we've been fortunate to actually help a lot of our clients, nonprofit and corporate, and is what? using the power of virtual, using like yeah. we're doing today, yeah, speaking exactly. to the masses, one to the many. Um, we've been doing a lot of uh, galas that are are sort of remote, or at least some version of that yeah. fundraising that's remote using live streaming. Um, and some of those are fully pre-recorded. Uh, yeah. Everything from soup to nuts is pre-recorded. Getting creative with iPhones. We have a little handout we give our folks that show how to use an iPhone, you know, properly yeah. to get that best image. Um, all the way through to we'll go around and, and record folks and then stitch it together and have someone live in our studio here. Uh, but using the power, we're fortunate to live in 2020 and not 1920. Yeah. We can use the power of virtual to reach the masses. Yeah, we had a, a you know change on a dime, as did many. So the online auction was ready to go. It was with someone I've worked with for 15 years. So you know we worked well together. But having to help, uh, we wanted to do something for the school district and give the kid, the seniors, something special. So while I don't have my youngest graduated in 18, so I'm not involved in that process, but we worked with the school district and we saw all of these virtual things they did. Like they, there's a, a group, they call it the Acoustic Cafe and they do a concert every year and we, they don't raise a ton of money, but it, it comes to us. And so they Lovely. did it virtually this year and I sat down and watched it for an hour and a half and it made me cry because it was so beautiful and they put it together. I don't know who did it, whether the kids did it, but it was amazing that they got mm. it done for us, you know? It's now, Christine, I got a, I got a question for you. Now, sure. I know you saw the film, right? Yes. yes. So my first, my, my first question is, you know, what did you think of the production of uh, the documentary called The Shutdown? Well, it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. It was so professional. It was so slick. But more than that, uh, you you guys got to the heart of what the business owners are mm. are dealing with, have been dealing with, and continue to deal with. Unfortunately, there are people who yeah. still don't want to come out. You know. Um, and you, you know, you can't change someone's mind on that. So they too, I'm sure have had to change the way they do things. You know, I mean, we went from doing fundraisers and helping families to saying, okay, who do we need to feed? We yeah. became this resource of just feeding people like, mm -hmm. okay. We, and we have people who were willing to go out and make deliveries and pickups. It was amazing. Just amazing. Yeah, it, it is incredible. I can say, you know, first town, the greater Smith town really came together yeah. as a community and to support everyone, understanding sort of, it really hit everyone. Yeah. Everyone got hit at once. We're all sort of in this together and everyone did, did a really nice job coming together, supporting each other. Um, you know, I know you have a relationship with with many of the people featured in the in the yeah. film. Um, what do you think of the stories? And, you know, is there one story that stands out more than others? Well, you know what? I, I know probably four of the five that you had on there, and they've all been amazing supporters of what we do. Mm. Um, and I talk to a lot of them on a regular basis. Um, in fact, I talked about feeding the families. The first person who came to me and said, you know, we we're probably going to shut down, but we want to feed families. Let's work with you. And that was Husk and Vaughn. Yeah. So they're amazing people. You know, here they may, business may not be here post Corona, but they weren't worried about that. They were like, can we feed families? So that's Nick. Mm. But also as what you said, Jason, about Edelberg, they've been supporting our Mike's hike. They've been our fun run sponsor for the last 10 years. Mm. And I did not realize that that was not essential or considered, you know, I was like, what, you know, dental health. Hello. You know? So that was pretty amazing to me. Even, and like you said, lush, you know, really touched you with all that was going on. We made goodie bags for Smithtown. And now we have a hop hog chapter for the graduating seniors. And in Smithtown, some of these businesses gave us 800 certificates or coupons to put mm. in our goodie bags. Crazy crate was one of them. Wow. And, in Hop Hog, Lush gave 300 certificates to their graduating wow. class. Wow, beautiful. So it's just amazing, right? That they, yeah. you know, and, and even Crazy Crepe every year we do this tasting event. Mm -hmm. They're one of the restaurants that comes in and makes crepes for people as one of the tastings. So, wow. you know, these are people who continue to give yeah. back and here they are struggling themselves. Yeah. And yet they give back. You know. You, know, you actually make a good point is, you know, through this the the pandemic, you know, all these local businesses immediately they they might may have been shut down, but they stepped up and all the resources that they had, they just gave to the community. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we're a few months into this, I think it's so important for the community 
to now support the local businesses just like they supported us. Yeah. So how important do you think this message that's threaded through the the film, how important is it now for this community to really come back strong and support these local businesses? It's crucial. I mean, you know, if you want to see Smithtown the way you knew it, if you don't want to see businesses have to shut down, if you have the wherewithal, you need to go out there and support them. I mean, that was really when I talked about turning our, you know, uh, focus on a dime when this happened. The first thing I did was I reached out to the local restaurants and I said, I'm making a page on Facebook called Smithtown Strong. I want you all to post on there, remind people that you're there, that you're doing takeout or whatever it is you're doing. Let people know you're there. And then a few weeks back, we said, let's do a restaurant bingo. Mm. And I grabbed, you know, 25 restaurants and put them on this card. And I put it out on Facebook and basically said, look, go to these four or five restaurants, post that you were there, give a review. And, and they pay us $15. And when you get that bingo, you're going to win a gift card from one of those restaurants. Mm. So, you know, it was just another reminder to let people know that yeah. your local businesses need you. We can always go to Target and Walmart and Lowe's and all the big box stores. They mm. will be there. But yeah. if you want, if your favorite restaurant is a small business, you need to support them now like never before. Yeah. The strength of your community really rests on the strength of your local marketplace. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so Christine, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I really appreciate everything that you've always done for our community here. And uh, I just want to also, is this the correct website here? Uh, yes, it is. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. So every, anyone who does not know Christine, which I know is very few, but for those of you who don't know her, um, she represents an amazing organization that's incredibly important, Smithtown Children's Foundation. You can go to their website right there. Um, but Christine, honestly, thank you so much for carving out some some time out of your business schedule. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for having Christine. me. Nice to meet you, Jason. We're going to yeah. talk. <laughs> yes, please. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Um, so Jason, I mean, isn't it incredible, you know, hearing some of these stories of people that have watched a film and, and, and how this film has really inspired them. But also I think hearing from Christine sort of just confirms that this was an important project. This was a message that really needed to be heard. hundred percent. You know, I, I was following some of the uh, Facebook comments as it was previewed and then it was launched. And, uh, that really, really touched my heart to see that people were saying, I had tears or I so relate to this and it makes it all worthwhile. As, as you know, you've been on a number of these type of projects, both with us and with other companies. When you do a, a video, especially when you're trying to tell a great story, you're making a film. Yeah. It, there's so many pieces um, and one change to the equation creates a totally different film, which yeah. is the beauty of it. It's art. It's art yeah. meets technology meets experience meets sort of uh, the luck of the draw, as Christine said. And, yeah. and I think that you don't always get a chance to hear people's reaction. Yeah. Um, so I'm so grateful for those that have posted, those that have watched. Thankful for those that have posted photos outside of their local business. Spread the word, watch the film, um, share the film, but more importantly, do the work after. Support your local business, support your local nonprofit. Take a photo, share, get the word out. And and Rob, I gotta say, I can't wait till maybe we get to do this again in my neck neck of the woods in New Jersey yeah. or or uh, you know across the country. I want to tell this kind of a story um, across our our great country that mm -hmm. there are people that are hurting, but there's hope. Absolutely, um, you know, Jason, you make a good point about. Um, you know, doing more of these projects. I've, I've had a few people reach out. One thing that I've, I've, I've really enjoyed is actually reading through the comments and actually reading through all of the, the messages that people send privately. You know, I may not be able to respond to all of them, so I do apologize, but there's been that many that have come through, you it's know, awesome. between the comments on, on the videos on the various platforms and the private messages, there are hundreds of messages coming through. I will say we read all of them. And uh, for the people that were involved with the project, like Jason was just saying, and myself, it really, it, 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 it's Im important for us to see that stuff because we knew the project was, was important. We knew the message was important, but you never know until you release it, if it's going to resonate well with people. And it was nice to see that. And uh, so this is why, like I started off by saying, you know, we put together this great, um, you know, film, Jason's crew, amazing production on, on this, on this film, but ultimately it's up to the audience on whether or not they're going to like it enough to share it. And they did. 
and it's it's been extraordinary. And as far as doing this again, absolutely. I would love for maybe if people would like to reach out to us, I want to put up your website if that's okay, Jason. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but, uh, but reach reach out to us. You know, we would love to have other people come on board and 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 co-produce this project with us. And uh, you know, maybe there's a way that we can we can sort of uh, collectively, as more people get involved, we can sort of fund maybe a a more national project and do these in communities around the country. I think that'd be really, really important because we can see how it has positively impacted the community here on Long Island. So, which has been, uh, been amazing. Uh, one question, we'll sort of end it soon here, but I know as we talked um, at length um, about, about this documentary, and we also then talked about, you know, how long should it be? And we landed on, on six minutes intentionally. You know, we wanted something that, uh, that everyone would, would really want to be able to watch from start to finish. But making a six-minute documentary from lots of footage makes post-production so hard. So had we decided to make it longer, what are some scenes that you would have added that unfortunately, just because we were limiting it to six minutes, that you had to cut? Uh, it's a great question. I love that you were sort of teasing out the behind the scenes stuff for any of those filmic nerds like me. You know, you want to know how how did that happen? Or let me see the director's cut versus the, the final cut. Uh, you know, it, you hit the nail on the head. It's very difficult to tell a short story that's good, but it's also difficult to tell a long story that keeps people engaged. Mm. And so uh, landing on a runtime, both in our, our marketing fields, but also our storytelling fields, to that, that sort of hits both. It gives us enough time to tell a story, but it's not too much time that people sort of attrition, they drop off and they just don't watch to the end or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> typically, I think the, the one, one, as an aside, one thing that people I think are, are realizing is our attention spans as a society is shrinking. Yeah. You know, we used to be a, a society that, um, you know, would see one movie a year or one movie a month and like, wow, to sit down in front of a flickering screen for an hour or two was magical. And now we yep. have access to stuff every day through our devices. And so it's, it's affected us as a, a population and as a race, as a human race, whether we like it or not, whether it's good or bad to be yeah. found out. Um, but I would say, you know, in terms of your question, what would have, what would have made it? I think I would love to have shared more about the starting of each person's business. Mm. I sort of only picked one or two to really encapsulate what that meant. Yeah. But really delve into that beforehand because you know you you want to understand the motivation of somebody and, and you have buy into somebody's life when you understand that backstory of why okay. they did what they did. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to the current issue that we unpacked, in this yeah. case, the shutdown you know, it, it's just that much more impact and you feel that much more connected. Yeah. I would say another couple of things that I probably would have put in. Um, I would have loved to have spoken to some customers and to some um, employees. We intentionally perspectives. spoke to owners, right? But to hear from an, from an employee's perspective, oh, yeah. how they, you know, Dr. Mark did such a good job keeping us on staff, even though it was tough times. Yeah. Uh, or to hear from a customer that's, that said, uh, you know, it's not just about my roots growing out or my need for X, Y, and Z, or yeah. you know, my hunger for crepes. It's, it's about wanting to support my local business. I'm physically yeah. not allowed to go in that place. Right. I wanted to hear from those folks. Yeah. Um, I think that would have been an interesting angle to really see more of sort of that other side of the story, not just from a business owner, which yep. I align with as a business owner, mm -hmm. but also to hear from, from the folks on the ground that are both the supporters and the workers. Yeah. Great points. And, uh, you know, hopefully if we, if we get to do this project again, you know, these are some stories that we can, we can add, uh, to the, to the documentary. Uh, just one last thing that sort of, I do want to touch on, cause I know I had a few people reach out to me and they were asking, well, how did you select the businesses to feature? And I, I think people were expecting a more complicated answer than I gave them because it was really simple. Number one is we had a short window, you know, from the, from the time that like I came up with the idea called you to when we, to when we started filming, it was only a couple of weeks. It, it wasn't, it may be two weeks. That, yeah. You know, we really expedited the process. Um, and which meant that, you know, since we were only going to be filming in one day, we needed businesses that were in sort of somewhat close proximity, uh, that could represent different in industries. And, you know, so I, you know, I, I leaned on some relationships that I had, I put the word out there and really it was more or less first come first serve. It was like the first businesses that says, yes, I'm available is the ones that we did. And, and in fact, I know 
you know, I think it was like two businesses that originally said, yes, you know, the scheduling w w wouldn't work out. And, and uh, so, you know, we had to quickly fill them up and I made a phone call and I was like, Hey, could you find someone? And it was really just first come first serve. And it wasn't at any, any more complicated than that, you know, but moving forward, I would love to get businesses that represent, you know, you know, all walks of life and 100%. really, really just show the diversity of different types of businesses there and to show all of that perspective. Um, and uh, I, I, th I think that would be nice. So maybe the next project we can sort of up our game and, uh, and maybe do something like that. And, and whether it be in, you know, another one in Long Island or New Jersey or so somewhere else, I know you travel all the time. I would love, I would love, I mean, I, I, we weren't really talking about this, but, but I'm going to put it out there now. Anyone who's watching, who wants to sort of join join us in this effort. If you want to help us out, you know, this was self-funded. This is something Jason and myself, we did this, uh, you know, ourselves, he dedicated his time, his talent. And, you know, we, we put together, um, uh, you know, our, our own crew of people and whether it be utilizing people at Awaken Films and, you know, financing the things that we had to finance in the back end in order to, get to, you know, distribution, there's costs involved. And, and we didn't want cost to be a factor, which is why we didn't ask for a penny from anyone. None of the businesses had to pay a dollar to be a part of this. You know, we wanted to be able to, we just genuinely believed in the message. Yeah. That's just tell the story. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what we wanted to do. And to be able to scale this up, we'd love to be able to have someone else come on board and, and to, to contribute to, to this project and, and help it grow because clearly, you know, 35,000 uh, people who have viewed it in, in just as, by the way, it's only been out for a few days. That's amazing. It's, it really is incredible. So, um, Jason coming full circle, like the way I started, Thank you so much for your friendship, for your professional professionalism, for your team and this project. It's it's been an honor to do this with you. My pleasure, Rob. As always, uh, it was a great idea. It's an idea unto a purpose, which is what makes my heart come alive. You know, I, I like to do tell stories that make change, that incite something to be different. And so I echo what you were sharing before. If there's some kind of funder that wants to come involved, great. But even aside from that, if there's some other folks that just have a great story in another state, reach out to us, tell us your story, and let's see if we can't make this happen. Tell, tell another powerful story under the purpose of healing as a nation. We need to come back from this stronger than ever. And Long Island is, is a great community. I actually wish we lived closer together so I could experience more life with you and your lovely family. Um, but more importantly, there are communities just like Smithtown and, mm -hmm. and the folks in Long Island here in New Jersey and in Pennsylvania and in California and in Idaho and in Texas. And so I would just encourage folks, if this is a uh, message is aligning with you, reach out to us, get yeah. a hold of Rob, reach out just through um, rebuild uh, the rebuild website. Yeah. Yep. Uh, re there it is on screen now, rebuildafter.com. Um, uh, of course, our website, awakenfilms.com. We'd ha be happy to partner with you on anything, any kind of visu visual storytelling, video production, filmmaking, commercials. But most importantly, let's be part of the solution. There's so many voices out there that are pointing out the wrong, the bad. And, and I agree, someone's got to be the, the truth sayer, but we've got enough of that. Let's be part of the solution. So if you want to be part of the solution, reach out to us. Tell us how we can work together to find a solution. Well put. I, I don't have to actually give any closing uh, line there because, uh, Jason, um, you really summed it up really well. Um, but um, just to, to sort of close it out, I just want to thank everyone who's today who joined us for this interview with both Jason with Awaken Filmed and Christine with the Children's uh, Smithtown Children's Foundation, um, just to talk about the film behind the scenes and, and really the importance of this message. Thank you guys so much for all of the work that you've put in so far in helping this message get out there. Um, in order for us this to resonate with the communities, we need you guys to come on board to share it with everyone. So thank you for doing it. Continue to do it though, um, because the work doesn't end with the first four days. Let's continue to inspire people with this message of the of the film. Um, and don't forget to go to rebuildafter.com. Uh, pledge your support. And remember, a pledge here is not pledging money. A pledge here is just saying, you know what? Yeah, I promise to go out and to support a small business in my local community. That's all it does. And then when you do that, you get to join this wonderful community of people who are saying that right now, continuing this conversation, sharing all these amazing pictures. Like Jason was saying, you guys definitely should check out this group. Want to be a participate. It's it's amazing what people are saying and posting and continue to comment, um, whether you're watching this on, on YouTube or on, on, on Facebook. 
comment, reply, have these conversations. We encourage it, right, Jason? We Absolutely. want people to have a conversation. It's community, you know, and, and the, 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 the separation might be a wall or a town or a state, but we can still have relationship and community through this amazing tool of whether it's a Facebook or it's the rebuild after uh, sort of folks that are, that are pledging, there's ways that we can still have relationship and community. And, and that encouragement causes us, motivates us, reignites us to be part of that change, to be the solution. Yeah. It's true. Listen, Jason, once again, thank you so much. Tell your team that I love them and I appreciate them. Can't wait to man. Work love again. you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having us and watching the film. Share it and can't wait to do something great together again. Take care, bud. Pleasure. All right, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for this exclusive interview. We've got some really great su surprises coming up in the coming weeks um, as we actually um, are going to be interviewing other people that were involved with the film, including some of those uh, businesses. So definitely stay tuned to that. Um, but definitely check out rebuildafter.com. Uh, watch the film again, share it with your friends and family. And together we can definitely rebuild after the shutdown. All right. Take care, everyone.